Welcome back to Blockchain Pill. My name is Alex, and it's not even been one week since we said that if the Internet Computer Protocol price ends this year at over $10, we're gonna have an explosive year in 2024. And now look at us. It's been a crazy pump on the Internet Computer Protocol price. We're currently sitting at $13.70, which is the highest yearly price that we've seen for the Internet Computer Protocol. Everybody on Twitter right now is going crazy. And finally, finally, a lot of people, a lot of influencers who previously badmouthed the Internet Computer Protocol are now starting to change their mind. And all of a sudden, the tech actually matters. And it's not only about hype and nothing else. And I think this is an important point to keep in mind that even if it's crypto, the tech matters, right? So there's two options that you have. You can go and chase random shit coins on random different chains, hoping to make your next 10x or 100x, or you can follow the tech and the innovation and sit comfortably. You believe Dominic when he says it's alien tech and you just held for dear life. And I want to congratulate everybody who has been in the ICP community for the past two years. It has not been an easy journey, but this is only just the beginning for the Internet Computer Protocol. Like there is two more years 2024 and potentially 2025. And I think the future is looking bright. So the price right now, trying to break $14. This is already way more than enough to make sure that we close the year at over $10. YCP yesterday and today was the only token with like a 20, 25% gain in one day, which is crazy. Everybody's happy in the ICP ecosystem. So what I want us to do today is I want to start a new series where we go over videos of Dominic Williams talking about the Internet Computer Protocol from the past. There are tens of videos of Dominic talking about the Internet Computer Protocol, and I think that they don't really get enough recognition. And hopefully in the months to come, we will get to cover all of them. And then there is the work of my fellow content creators on the Internet Computer Protocol who also cover interesting aspects of the Internet Computer Protocol and the ecosystem. They talk about the technology, why the Internet Computer Protocol is a great investment we'll go over those. So the two main content creators that I recommend you go watch are, of course, Jerry Banfield and Bobby O. Those guys, incredible work and incredible coverage of the Internet Computer Protocol. And for somebody who's new to the ecosystem, absolutely go and follow those guys. You will get educated by them about the Internet Computer Protocol. So let's go with Dominic himself here. So this interview is called How Definity is Reinventing the Internet which is quite a big statement to do, especially four years ago when ICP was not even launched. So Dominic does an interview with Bloomberg and let's see what he has to say about the Internet Computer Protocol. Mind you, this is from four years ago. So we're gonna see a young Dominic here talk to those reporters. So let's see, let's see what he has to say. So talk to us about how you are envisaging a decentralized internet. What's wrong with it at the moment? Well, I, I, I think there's lots of good things about the internet. Uh, Definit is working on something called the internet computer, which extends its functionality. So the internet computer can host uh, a new breed of secure hack-proof software systems, which addresses the security problems that we see today. And it can also uh, host a new breed of open internet service, which can compete, compete with big tech and solve some of the problems we're seeing emerging. So, but is the idea here, uh, I mean, if we sort of decentralize it, uh, how exactly do we sort of structure it in a way where you can actually scale it up to the point where it's going to be just as useful as the internet today? Because right now I could go online. It's pretty seamless. I mean, so the interviewer has a great question. If we are looking to reinvent something as big and as used as the internet itself, bro, you better make sure that A, there is a lot of benefits in what you're building. And secondly, and I think it's more important, you need to make it as easily as possible for the people to make this switch from the old internet to the internet computer protocol. The internet is created by a protocol that right. combines uh, thousands of private networks. Mm -hmm. And the internet computer will be created by a protocol that combines thousands of data centers. So, um, you know, the hosting Who's capacity- controlling those data centers though? Well, it's a protocol. So okay. in the same way, the internet is controlled by a protocol. Sure. The internet computer is created by a protocol. And that compares to something like Amazon Web Services, which is really the sort of proprietary closed infrastructure of a private company. Gotcha. You mentioned sort of taking on big tech. Imagine you're this genius, right? And you have this crazy idea about how to revolutionize something that is already well established. And you go to do an interview with some people that they 
at that point, they cannot comprehend what you are trying to do, but you, you still go there and you still try to explain it to them. How do you plan to do that? Is it through cloud? And we know Amazon Web Services has a cloud product. Microsoft Azure has a cloud product. How specifically do you sort of plan to tackle taking on big tech? So the internet computer um, makes it possible to, to build uh, internet services in a different way. Um, they're called open internet services, and they're built using something called autonomous software. Um, so nobody owns an open internet service, but it's updated by a, a governance, an open governance system. And they have an advantage, or will have an advantage, because they can provide guarantees both to users and also to entrepreneurs that want to build on top of them. So today, um, there's something called platform risk stalking the world of tech. So an early example of this would have been, for example, um, Zinger. You know, Zing is a social games company. It was very successful. It built on top of Facebook. It IPO'd. Um, its valuation was north of $10 billion. And then Facebook changed the rules. You know, the APIs that it had built on top of changed from underneath it. And, uh, you know, a few months later, Zinger had lost 85% of its value. Uh, more recently, for example, on LinkedIn, which is the business directory, um, provided APIs that hundreds of startups used to incorporate business profiles into their own services. And then LinkedIn revoked those APIs. And of course, you can imagine what happened to those startups that depended upon the business profiles. The only people that kept their API access were other big tech players like Salesforce and Microsoft. So for these reasons, you know, if you build on big tech today, you're really building on sand. Mm -hmm. And if you go to a VC and say, look, I, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, I've got this idea to create a new service, but I need to build on top of big tech, you'll likely get laughed out of the room. Mm. And even you know the successful recent tech IPOs, I think it's 17 or 18 of the last 22, mention platform risk yeah. as being existential, an existential risk in, in their S1 filings. Right. Yeah. I'm interested in- I think in the recent years, it has been proven that you are really not safe by using those centralized platforms where somebody at the top can decide, hey, you know what, I, I really don't like what you're talking about. You will no longer be able to reach your audience or even worse, we will delete you altogether. And now good luck doing what you're trying to do. So this is another problem that Web3 and the Internet Computer Protocol solves for the users where you no longer have this platform risk that Dominic is talking about. And here he's talking about one company that was literally almost destroyed, almost killed by Facebook when they change the APIs. It's really interesting to see this. And this was from four years ago. And look how much worse it has gotten in the past couple of years. And the fact that you've been to big VCs yourself, Anderson Horowitz, Polychain Capital, and the like, how, when you explain your sort of peer-to-peer -peer internet vision almost, how, how long an investment are they looking at? When do you gain the critical mass? How do you ensure that you've got enough people involved that this becomes a reality sooner rather than later? So I, th I think all of them are long-term investors. And, uh, you know, we at Divinity believe in the potential of the internet computer and the value and the impact it can, it can produce. And, you know, if we, didn't, if we didn't create the internet computer, somebody else would, right? It's a natural evolution of the internet. You know, the internet started off just provide, providing connectivity, and now it's going to be able to host secure software systems and open internet services too. So we're extending the internet. Um, the technology is available to do this. You know, we're um, building on top of advanced computer science and cryptography and so on. And if we didn't do it, someone else would do it. So people are really just backing the sort of long-term evolution of the internet and what it's going to do for us. Just real quickly, though, what, do you, what makes you think that... The this is so true. So the same way Bitcoin became the next evolution of finance with the introduction of the blockchain technology where you could finally have peer-to-peer -peer transactions without the need of an intermediary, the same way... The Internet Computer Protocol is building the future of the internet. And as Dominic just said, this is the future and the next logical evolution of the internet. If we come back to this video in the next two years or five years or even the next 10 years, I think that we'll listen to, to him talk and be like, that was true. That was true. So it is similar to listening to, uh, for example, Steve Jobs talk about the iPhone when all we had was the regular house telephones that we had. And there was this visionary that comes and talks about a completely new way of doing things similar to what Dominic is doing now. And people cannot understand until it becomes reality. And then we think even right now, like how have we lived 
without internet and without phones. And now a lot of people have, you know, phone addiction and we're literally connected to the phone 24 seven. It makes a lot of sense now. It didn't make a lot of sense 15 years ago. Google's and Amazon's of the world are going to sort of relinquish their grip in any sort of way off of this. Well, they're not. I mean, I think what's going to happen is, um, you know, this they're going to incre become increasingly monopolistic and we're going to see more consolidation. Um, regulators are going to find it hard to deal with this. You know, the first attempts are things like the accept cookies dialogue you see on every website. Mm -hmm. um, you never see it incidentally on Facebook or Google, right? It's just every independent website now has to present the right. accept cookies dialogue. Yeah. Um, you know, they're not very good at fixing stuff. Uh, they let Facebook buy Instagram and WhatsApp. They let uh, Google buy Waze and more recently DeepMind, which I think will prove mm. to be a huge mistake. Um, so I, over time, though, they're going to you know, increase the level of regulation and, and, and big tech will become sort of quasi-nationalized uh, industry, which is very highly regulated. And then there'll be the free open internet. Right. And the free internet is going to be Web3, where the people get the power back in their hands and away from those huge corporations. Definity with the Internet Computer Protocol is one of the pioneers in this Web3 technology. And I think the future is looking very bright for the Internet Computer Protocol and for the new internet in general. I'm absolutely looking forward to look back at this video in a couple of years. I think we will all agree that then it will make a lot more sense than it does now. So this was the final episode before the new year. I want to wish all of you a happy new year and good luck with everything that you're doing in 2024. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in 2024.